This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, thank you for your availability on this presentation. And next week, I will be discussing or seeing the way we can be able to clean the data provided. That is, I have some data here which will be used, which I am going to clean. So, an example is this one. This one is for consultancy. So, we want to see how we can be able to join these different data and uh, be able to come up with. I finally clean the data. So there are this uh, data here. Uh, there are six of them. So I want to see the way forward and how we can come up with a clear and clean uh, data set that can be used for visualization in case there is a request. So I also have uh, the requirements that will be guiding me on how to clean that data. So one of the requirements that might, was provided by business user is to have columns of date, category, subcategory, description, cost type, office location type, source, quantity, unit price, amount, shillings and amount in US dollars. Then that's just to track every information with, res with respect to those columns. Then another requirement was to combine human resource data, finance data, and construction together as consultants data. That is all those data that were there. Uh, that's to have one central position for the data. Then we have another requirement that is to sort the data in ascending order that is from oldest to latest. And that is we, we will be arranging in terms of the years. So from the, late, from the oldest year to the latest year. Also we have to fill the dates based on the columns so that I can filter all information on a given date. Also uh, to have a month, uh, slash date slash year date format that's all of them having two two digits so that you can have consistency on the column for the dates and then also will be uh, we'll need to have two decimal places for the unit price and then amount in column amount columns so that you can have a uniformity across the columns that is for the amounts and also the unit price then lastly, we will need to replace uh, nulls. And this one, uh, I think was supposed to be nulls on the dates in the source column to be no details. But this one is not much uh, of uh, important in terms of the requirement. That's why you can see a priority is not even high. So we will be looking into the others before we try to convert that. Uh, those nulls into no details or uh, final data. So uh, uh, we have our data as shown, and uh, the data are uh, in different uh, ways. That is different data. That's consultancy, construction, finance department, health finance department, human resource and IT department data. That you want to join, and you can, as you can see, they are in one of my folders. So I converted them. I tried to have their own specific folder so that I can be in a position to join them and also be able to clean my data in the required way. So we will be using uh, different tools here. Uh, we have so many tools here that will help us in cleaning the data. So we have like browser input data, output data, text input. But today we want to see how we can join or uh, use as these tools to clean that uh, the data that we have. And I will be using uh, tools like directory tool, uh, like formula tool. Yeah, I think some of us are familiar with these tools. So we, I will just go direct to the tools that are uh, as in to start uh, working on the workflow. And I want to input my data uh, uh, that is now in that folder, all of it. So what I'll use is the directory tool, which enables me to input my files in a folder. 
even if if you can come here you can see a sign of the folder which you just when you want to input that data you will just click on it you look for your data where it is so my data is uh, uh, the way it was uh, i showed you it is in uh, a folder called the data so all the way you can see where that uh, procedure is you just just click on downloads and then you come to your data source then my data are on the folder called data so i'll click ok and if you can see here it is showing you that uh, that direction of where the data is in that folder so i'll leave i'm i'm directing my data here to this canvas using uh, that this tool that's directed to, to be able to input my files that is in one of the folders in my desktop so if i run this one i'm expecting it to be okay so my data are here so if you can see uh yes the way my data are now they are uh, uh, the file names are these ones that is consultancy consultation finance department healthcare department human resource and it department everything is here so what we need to do to do is to uh, have this data clean and also be joined to one place so that we can use them to uh, have the final cleaned uh, joint data to enable us to be able to visualize a complete uh, visualization so to uh, to enable me read this data i'll uh, come up with a macro file or a macro macro uh, data that will enable me to read this directory and that the files that are here so what i'll do i'm just trying to command uh to command my my workflow to read the data that is in this in this directory this is just a direction showing us where the data is but we want to now to read that data in that directory and uh, tool so what i'll do I'll, I'll use input a data this one is just to input a data type a data set that you you want uh, as an as like an example of the data that you want to use so i can just come to my files i can select any of these files just to show my the alt tricks that this is the kind of that i want to use and uh, yeah so it's an excel data uh, i'll open it and i'll just select the the sheet because now here i just selected one so it's uh, the only sheet available so i'll select it and uh, yeah press ok if i run this one i'll only have that data as, as uh, shown here so this is the data uh, the data kind of that the kind of data i'll be using so you can see it's uh yeah it's having some else yeah, and also some other uh, columns that are not required so but i just want to command altrix that uh, this is what i want to use so uh, what i'll use is uh, another tool called the para uh, control parameter i want to control uh, i want to control altrix to show it that the kind of uh, data that i want to use and my in my workflow is the what kind so i'll just show this and uh, you can see we have an action what action do you want the action has if you can see here it's telling you that the action has not been configured so we want to configure it to configure the action that we will be we will, we will want it to be updated on a, on this workflow so if if you can also see uh, there's a place asking you update value something like that so we want to know which value will be updated in that workflow so it will come and then select the file so you just click on the file you don't have to do much thing there so you just click on the file and run it so after running you've just you've just confirmed to the to the workflow that or the altrix that you want this uh, to be updated so it's consultancy and you, you know that the consultancy is uh, for for our workflow here consultancy is one of the file names 
these ones. So we want to con uh, tell Actrix that this is the, we want to update this on our workflow. Then after having this, we want to output, and because we are using macro files, we will be outputting our macro. So I'll uh, output, I'll look for the tool called output out, uh, macro. So this one, this one is the macro output. And take it to my canvas then, and join. So after joining, uh, we want now to, to show Altrix how we need, uh, how we need the bring or take the data from the directory tool. So you will come here and then look for the interface designer, which will be enabling you to command Altrix on how we need uh, bring the data from the directory tool to your workflow. So um, that if you can see here, we have the first uh, the first command. We have different things here. First is the standard icon, it's just a, an icon that will be shown, or when you see it, you'll know that this is the macro ID I developed, or this is one of the macros. So uh, we just use a standard one, or if you want different different types, they are here. You just select one of them, and uh, you will use it. And then uh, here, you can see output field changes based on macro configured or data type, but what you want is the mode the mode of the output from the directory tool. Remember we just selected one of the data type, data set I mean, that, uh, that we want to get data from that, the kind of data that we need. So here, first of all, first of it is just is telling you that the mode that will be outputted will be all inter interactions will have the same output schema. That is if error, if error if different, uh, that is error if different. Then the, another, the next one is auto configure by name, that's wait until all iteration done. This is just, uh, if you select this one, you will uh, take the data from the director to the way they are without alternating anything. But the last one, if you select this one, auto configure by position, this one will just uh, wait like, uh, in a given direct, uh, I mean, a procedure, like if it is uh, in terms of alphabetical order, it will just select from A to B to C like that, running like that, without, uh, it will be following a given uh, procedure. But when you select this one, it will just take the data the way it is without uh, altering anything on it. So for our case, what we just need is the, all the data from the direct to, to our workflow. So I'll select it, this one, auto configure by name, and then I'll run my workflow. So after running my workflow, uh, I have now my, my macro. So uh, what I'll do next is to save this macro so that I'll, I'll be able to use it on my, work, on my workflow here. So I'll come to files, then save us then save to browser. So I'll save my uh, macro. Let me save it. Uh, macro file new. So that I know uh, the name, the macro file new to what I've created just right now. And also I'll uh, put this in a container so that uh, I have my files in that, the specific container so that I can even rename it here like my macro uh, file. So I uh, run my, my macro. So okay. So what I what I do next is just to uh, input my macro here so that it will help me get the data from the directory tool. So I'll input my data just right click, right click, then insert you go to where our macro is, it's here. As you can see, we have our macro file there. So you select your macro file. Then after selecting, you see here, it's asking you to do something. Choose the field or control parameter. And uh, remember, in this, uh, in this part here, we have our files on the directory tool. 
So what we need is the, the complete files. So uh, we need these, these files here. Uh, from as in with with that direction, that is uh, on that on that folder. So I'll select on the file folder path so that I get all the information from that folder. So I'll come here and select one of my one of the fields and select the full path. When I run this one, I'm expecting it to uh, give me my data. So you, if if you see this. Uh, it's, yeah, it has just outputted the field the, or the, the file that I had selected on the macro. So to, to enable me read all the files that I've confirmed or I've, uh, tell, I've told the Altrix to bring from the directory to, I'll, tell, I'll use another tool to enable me browse or see every file or every data that I want to use in my uh, workflow. So I'll use the browse tool. This one will enable me to view or get every data from that a directory tool using my macro file the way I've commanded it. So if you if you use the Mac, the browser tool, you see now you have all your data that is from consultancy to construction to finance. Uh, Healthcare also. Then we have human resource and then IT. So we have all the data as directed from the directory tool the way they were. So we have all the data that are here. The, all of this data are now on our workflow. So uh, now we have our data inputted in the workflow. I'll put them in. Uh, in a container to to just explain maybe seeing this one is just inputting uh, inputting the data in the workflow. Yeah, so you you can do anything with this container, like you can even close it. That's disabling it. You can do anything, even changing the color inside. Maybe everything you need to do with it. Uh, and do it in a container. So we have that one. Then, uh, then now we can now already we have our files. So we will we want to see this file. The file that we have. How is it? We need to to confirm some few things that need to be removed, and which are not necessary for our data. So, for instance. From uh, the data that we have, you can see we have so many columns that are null and uh, not having any data. So we need to remove them, these ones. Then we have also another columns. Those were the rows. Then we have, uh, yeah, those ones were columns. So here we have the rows that are having nulls, completely nulls. So if there is any, any row with that with the data, you don't. Uh, remove those nulls on that specific row. So we 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 receive that the way it is, and we don't alter it. Like uh, removing some rows that are having data, maybe we only remove the complete rows that are null in nature, or not. Uh, that's the way we got, were given the data. So I'll uh, first of all I remove the, the 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 columns that are not required in my in my data. So I use select tool. This one will enable me to remove those those uh, columns and even arrange arrange my columns the way I want. So I'll bring my the, the the select tool here and then connect with my data to it. So uh, I'll come here and then remove the columns that I want to remove. So we have F12 to the last F that is not having any data. So I remove them. And remember, we are also following the, the requirements. We have the requirements here, these requirements here. So we have even some of the columns that are available on the data, but the, the requirements are telling us to use the specific columns that are asked by the business user. 
So I'll just remove the files that uh, are not required. So what I'm doing, I'm excluding the other the other columns that are not required in my requirement. So also name of patient is not uh, required in the in the my requirements. I'll also exclude it. Uh, the units I'll exclude it, and even the unknown. So the remaining part will is what will remain on my on my last on my final data. So I can even confirm this uh, if uh, it has done what we've asked. So you see, uh, right now the last the last column is this one. Don't have the other the other F Y F twelve F does those Fs are not available now. But if you can see now again, we have we still have the NAS with us. So to enable us to uh, clean those NAS, we'll use uh, data cleansing tool, this one here. I'll just drag it on my canvas like that. And then I'll command now that tool to, to help me clean those uh, rows. So I'll remove the NAS rows. Remember, this is just cleaning completely rows that are not, excluding the rows that are having some figures like one or two uh, rows there. So I will clean everything here. I won't replace with anything because I just need uh, to remain with my, my data without nulls on the rows completely. So if I run this one, It's okay. So now, if you can even view this, you can see now the the the, the records are, have remained to be six, 564 records that are now displayed. That means uh, the complete rows within us have been cleaned like that. So uh, the next part we want to confirm from our requirements. So far. Uh, we have these these columns. That's the category, subcategory, uh, description, cost type, type, office, up to the please point out on those areas that have something like that. So we will be looking into our requirements and see what was expected of us. So we have date, category, subcategory, uh, description, cost type, office, location type. Source, quantity, unit price, amount, pension shillings, and even amount in US dollars. So what we don't have here is amount in US dollars together with the source. But remember, this source is just a place where we we got that those data. So we can come on, on our workflow and see uh, which which data is it required. Like here, you can see this is the, the places where those files were, were good. So that's our source. So we replace this to be uh, our source. So I can come back to my select tool. So to, for me to change the names of any column here, I'll use select tool. So I can even come back to this and uh, change the name of that, that column here. So I just click it and uh, uh, rename. So you, get, you are renaming that that column, that column called please point out on those areas that you had, you have already looked looked into. So if I run this, I'm expecting to have that column also renamed. So you see, we have our column here called source, the source that we changed or renamed on our workflow. So the next thing we want to do is uh, to to have our to have the amount in US dollars. So to do that, to do that, we'll use another tool called formula tool, which will enable us to input another another column with the, the formula that we want it to operate in only any column here, more so on the numerics, because numerics are what normally uh, go with the, the formulas. That's the numeric type of data and the, the double. So yeah, those kind of uh, data types. So I'll use the formula tool here. I'll put it into my canvas. 
them and come here and now select the column. So I want to have a column called amount in US dollars, like that. But we know amount in US dollars when you have amount in Kenya shillings, how we get it, we just divide the amount in Kenya shillings in 100. So we uh, come and then select amount in Kenya shillings, yeah. So remember you, click, you are clicking on these uh, columns and constants. But this one is the formula, one, the function or uh, the kind of formulas that we are normally using in the Altrix uh, tool. So uh, to get your amount in US dollars, you will divide your amount in shillings with 100. And you can see it has changed. It was previously 27,700. 27, but when you, you apply that formula, it's changing into 277, that is US dollars. You can also change the data type to a double, like that. So if you run, we will have our column called US, amount in US dollars. Yeah. So uh, next thing we want to do is to even we can even confirm something on uh, the amounts. Remember, the amounts are only gotten when we multiply the quantity uh, multiplied by the unit price. So uh, what we want to do here is to maybe if you can see, we can uh, we will use a formula, a formula to help us because we know it's a multiplication between quantity and unit price. We'll just come here and maybe add another function and say we want to, to, to have that function on the amount in Kenya shillings. So we just select amount in Kenya shillings and then we'll input our formula. Remember it's quantity multiplied by uh, the, the unit price. But now, if you can see now we have one in this uh, color that is reddish and the other one in black. So it means we have an error. So you can see which part is having the error. So you can see here, uh, we are trying to apply numeric operator to string value. So I'll change, I'll try to replace what is the string available, what's the string on this data. So I'll, I'll first of all, uh, do away with that formula, then come and confirm on the quantity, what is making it to be string. Because anything on the quantity that is string, if you apply that formula, it won't run or it won't give you any any out, output uh, because uh, tricks is so sensitive and is sensitive in term in a way that any data that is not complying with the formula it won't uh, run or it won't give out that answer that you want. So let's see uh, what is making this to be a string. You can see now here we have 0, 0,5. Automatically, this is that comma makes this figure to be a string, not double. But we know formulas only applies on the double part. So I'll try to replace this. So I'll come back to my formula too and apply a formula there that will enable me to replace that 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 uh, string part, that those color, this those uh, commas and the, yeah, I think it's just the comma that is making these files to be string. Let me just go through the, the all of it and see if there is anything else that is making my data to be string. So you can see it's only those those commas. We don't have any other any other string. So with that, we just replace those string with something that would enable our formula to work. And we know formulas only also works on the decimals. So if we put, we replace that comma with the decimal to make it 0 0.5, because also we know, if we can confirm from our data here, uh, for instance, we know uh, like if quantities are 100, 
and unit price is 600. We multiply two, we will get 60,000. So this one, if you multiply zero, uh, let us assume that this is 0 0.5. If you multiply by 140, we'll get 70. So automatically, this one is supposed to be uh, a full stop or a decimal. That's 0 0.5. So to change that, we'll use a formula, and it's on the quantity. Remember, it's on the quantity. So we'll use a formula uh, to help us replace those commas with the full stop, and I'll use replace replace function so uh for that one i'll use i want just to replace my those those specific uh the specific st string i think yeah those commas and on that on that uh one and that quantity part so on the string part, what is string? The string is the quantity that we want to change. So we select quantity. Now our target, yes, is uh, we are targeting the comma, and we want to replace those commas with full stop. So I will. So if you see this, it's telling you what. That malfunction, malformed function call. So let's, let's try to see what was the issue here. So yeah, I think let's try to run this. Yeah, it's okay. So the formula we, that we, we will man, we've been able to replace. Let's just confirm our data if those specific uh, commas have been changed to this one. Yeah, for instance, this one. This one was 0, 0,5, but now it's 0, 0.5. And uh, if let's just look for, see if there is any comma available. Uh, yes, can just search. You see, on the quantity, we don't have any comma. The only commas are available are on the other uh columns that are uh, string columns like source so uh we have also we have converted those commas or replaced those commas with uh, full stops then now we have that so let's try to see if we can have now our formula on the on that amount in Kenya shillings where we wanted to see if it's really quantity multiplied by the unit price so we come here on the amount of Kenya shillings. There, then we select uh, the specific columns that we want to use in, my, in our multiplication. So it is quantity. The multiply the quantity. But the unit price. Like that. So still, I try to apply numeric, apply that to the string value. So uh, to confirm that, uh, we just come back to our workflow and confirm what are the type of the data that we are having here. So I'll go and do away with this first. Then come back here and, and see. If you want to see the data types that are in our columns, use the select tool. You drag it there. Then you can see now the data types that are in your columns. So let's confirm on the quantity first. The quantity here is in string. So to enable us to do that multiplication first, we will change this one to a double like that. So uh, the one that we want to use that is the quantity and the unit price. Both of them are in double, which will enable us the function tool, the formula tool to be able to run or uh, do that uh, calculation. So after that, I run my workflow to make sure that there are now my data type on the quantity side is, uh, is double. Then I'll take my formula tool again here. Then uh, apply the, the formula that I wanted now. That's on the amount of machines. Then it was uh, quantity 
multiplied by the unit unit price yeah now you can you can even confirm now on the preview part it's telling us now that data preview is 27,700 that is the first the first data if we can run this this is now our our workflow is okay and it's telling us that the first part the first column that is it is uh, one multiplied by 27,700 it is giving which is giving us 27,700 as we expected that amount in is to be so uh, i think i'll also put this in a container yeah to put something in a container you just highlight those yeah let me just remove this and then explain how Yeah, let me run fast. Yeah, to have those container, you you highlight your tools the way they are. Then you go to any tool as highlighted. When you want to know it's highlighted, you see this uh, this margin on every tool, and even the the connection we say is is having some boldness on it so we just add a container that is it will be there you can change the container so here it's uh, just formulating we are formulating the column the column i'm going to finish it Amounting finish links and getting amount in US dollars. So you can do anything on it again. So yeah, to remove these uh, these uh, annotations, you just come here and uh, you can remove them, and hide. And now we have this workflow. We can now continue the working. So the next thing, the next thing on this, now we have our columns as required, all the columns. So the next part is to combine human resource data, finance data. So this one, we have, we already did that when we were uh, bringing our files on this workflow. That's by use of this directory tool, we already combined all the files together. Uh, to this workflow as you can see on this uh, preview here we have our data already in our workflow that's uh, 564 records that are being displayed they are having the consultancy and all the other data up to the it data that we want so we can confirm on the other part that is sort the dates in ascending order that is from oldest to to the latest but before we do this, let's just first of all uh, convert our dates to the required format. Then we'll sort that date uh, in that ascending order or descending order. Maybe we want, to, but here we want it to be in ascending order. So let's just first of all convert our format, our date format, into this format here. That is month uh, slash day slash yes. So we'll come back here. So if you can see now, if you can confirm with our data on the date, on the date part first, you see we have this kind of date that is a uh, four figure on the year, then dash, then two figure on the month, then dash, then two figure on the, on the date. Then we have some other kind of, yeah, we have this one and we have two figure on the date then slash five uh, that's one slash then four slash not slash but then four on the year then let's confirm have another one uh, this one is the kind of the one that is already on the first call on the first part 
Uh, yeah, we also have this, which is having two, two, four kind of uh, date with the slash uh, within between the, the date and the month. Yeah, so even we have the, the, the nurse, but these nurse are having data. That's why we did not remove those nurse. And then, yeah, so we have three kind of that date type here or date format. One is this one, the other one is this one, the other one is the one having a two figure on the date with the slashes. So what I'll do, I want just to have those those data, uh, both of the, and as in the specific data, the date type formats on their specific uh, like outputs so that we will be able to be converting the specific date specifically on their, all of, and when all of them are the same, it will be easier for us to convert them into the into the format that the RTX understands. Then after that, that's when we will be in a position to convert now our dates into the string format required by the business user. So to do that, to to match or have our data in that specific order, that's the first uh, kind of date format. The second one will use a filter tool where we want to filter those kinds of dates, the specific date types that you want to, to have. So we'll see this. That's on the on the filter tool. Then we want to filter uh, the specific date formats. So we remember Altrix understands this kind of date format. This one is two on the year, then dash, then two on the month, then dash, then two on the date. So we want to tell uh, Altrix to match those specific uh, those specific date, date formats. So we will use a function called regular expression match, which will, which, will, which will help us to match the specific uh, dates. So we'll use a regular expression, which is matching. So remember, we are matching this that 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 uh, that column or that that I mean. So we'll select our constant or our column that is the date here. But now we want to uh, show the Altrix that now this is what is available that we want to to match. So to do that, we'll use a, 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 an expression that uh, will be in, uh, matching those specific expressions. So if you can come here, you can see we have four on the year, then dash, then two on the month, then dash, then two on the date. So we'll use uh, a formula that will, or uh, yeah, a formula that will enable you to see the digits, specifically the digits. So to, to convert, to confirm your digits, is a formula here. So uh, like that. When you put a slash like this slash with the dates telling you what digits do you want to show at least that they are on, the, on that format, like on the date format. So the first one is having four digits. Then you will close. Then the way it, uh, it's having the dashes, so you also use the dash. And again, you use the same formula. That's the that slash. The, uh, now we confirm how many digits are on this there too. So you also use you put there too. Then another dash. Then again, lastly, on the last part is also two. So again, we use two. Then we will close. If we run this, we expect to match them. So if it's true that this formula is true and it has found those kind of uh, formats, it will put them to the the true side but if it's not it's false then it will again uh, put them in the other false side so if we run this see we we confirm that we have now the true and here we see they are uh, we don't have any 
So it's me, that means that on our formula here, we might have done some errors on the same. So if you can see here on the two, I omitted the D, the function for D to show that the digits, to capture the digits. So if I run this one, yeah, you can see now we have the data also output. It's now confirming that that formula has captured or marked some data. So we see that's the data here. So we expect all of these data to be on having the same date format, like that. You see, all of those dates are on the same format. Then that's for that format is this one. That's uh, four digits on the on the first one, then followed by two digits, then followed by two digits also uh, in between the the dashes. Then uh, we see now what is on the false side. On the false side here, we have the other kind of formats. Like the first one is two, then slash, then five, as in one, then slash, then four, those in terms of the digits. So again, we want to filter this kind of dates, these kinds of uh, date formats here. So I'll again, I'll use the formula tool to enable me to do that. So again, you see, you use the, 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 the then procedure, we'll use our regular expression match, this one, and we are matching on the date. But our pattern now will a little bit change from the previous one, but still you use the same formula to capture the digits, specific digits. So you can even click here to confirm for you what next are you wanting, do you want to, to match? So uh, the next part is having a two on the first one, then uh, it's divided by a slash, then the same uh, followed by one on the month, then slash, then the same followed by four now for the years, then plus. If we run that, we expect the true side to have this kind of format when this formula has matched some of those dates. So if you run that, now if you can confirm from this, you won't see if it's true, it has captured what you wanted. So we'll see these dates now. We expect all of these dates to have one digit on the month, two digits on the date, and then four digits on the so yeah, all of them are the, the same, uh, that format. So that means on the false side, you have the other kinds that you see here is two, two digits on the date. And then we also have the null. Yeah, I think, yeah, we have, we are remaining with the nulls and this kind of date format. It's also the, the same, uh, the same, procedure follows uh, to make sure that also we match the, the next part of the date, date format. So we'll come here. Uh, the same formula applies, regular expression match, and we are uh, matching on the date. Then here you can come and have your format again. Uh, the same applies, uh, the first one, yeah, it's the two digits, two digits, then four digits, but they are separated by the slash. So we come here and then it's starting from two digits, then slash, then again, we convert, we check on the digits, it's also having two, uh, again slash. So this is just the dates, but now we want to show Artrix that let's match this kind of format together. So yeah, we have slash there. We finish up with four digits of four days. Then we close. So if you run this, finally we will expect to have those kind of dates. So these one are having two two, two, four kind of format. And then if you can see on the side of 
the faults is having the other kind of deaths from that's the null. You see here we have only the null sign, the null part of it. And then right now is you you can see we have the specific formats matched together. The three kind of formats matched together, and even the the other kind of format where we don't have the dates on that um, that date corner. So the next thing we want to to tell Actrix that now this one is the format that's available. So you convert with the format that you can understand. So to do that, we will use the, uh, the formula tool to have to enable or uh, to give the formula that will enable Actrix to convert those dates to the format that it understands. So we come here to get the formula tools uh, on all the filters. So you can even, yeah, let's just start from one of it. Uh, so here you will select a column where where you will expect those dates to be uh, placed. So let's select a, a, a column for that date. So let me just put it like that. That yeah, let me use that old red that read so that it can read that kind of a that format uh, in that formula. So here you will you want to we want to pass to pass our uh, show Alfred that now this is the, the 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 format that's available. So you convert into the formula that you understand so that we can be able to convert them again. The formula that it's the format that we want or the business user needs this kind of format. That's the the, the month uh, a month with the two digits slash that with the two digits slash then year with the two digits. So we come here we look for the formula that that pass. You can even type or search for it, but most uh, it's better if you can type it. It normally can text them. Uh, to you very very fast. So we want to pass our our dates. So you can even see here it's telling you that this one converts a date string with specified format and language to the standard ISO format. This one. So this one is the format that uh, Alex understand. That is four digits on the year, two digits on the month, then two digits on the date with the hours, minutes, and second type of time. So uh, we remember we want to check on the date. So we we'll just uh, select your corner. That's the date corner. And now here, this one is now uh, like the function that you want us to read on that date. Already, you can see now already our date is okay. But now we want just to be sure how we can do that and convert that, those dates on that format. So uh, here you will use the percent. Just just put them the way they are, but using a function, uh, this uh, percent here. So you, you have to show it that we are starting with the year, then dash, then again, uh, month, then dash, then followed by the date, then we can close. So I also convert this to to date type uh, data, so that at the end of the day you will convert now the dates into the string. Uh, but because now this one is the date, the date format that is understood by Atrix. But the other one that uh, we've been given to convert into, it's another format in string because of the slashes. So you will convert this on the type. You just add, uh, click on this, and uh, you select the date here. So if you read, even if if uh, if you you can if you show you show it that is a different level. Let's confirm. Like if we put here, we start with the date. You see on the data preview, it's telling you already that there's nothing like that on that uh, on that part. So we just when you change it to the required format or the, requ the format that's available, it's changing also on the preview to be on the with the right format. So if you run this, 
it has on its uh, yeah now now Altrix has understood that the format available is which kind of format on that data type then we also uh, use the same on these two filters so this one remember this kind what kind of data was here that format uh, let me check on it you see it's a uh, the two digits on the date, two digits, one digit on the month, then two digits, four digits on the year, but they are separated by the slashes. So we'll come back here, select the date, the date read, the way we had selected earlier on the previous one, that's date, read, a column, then use the same formula, date pass, This one, the time pass, I mean. Then our the date that we want, the what we want to, to convert is there. Then now you see here on the preview, on the preview, it's not on the format required by the Artrix. But if we tell Artrix now, this is the kind of format available, it will convert it to the format that it's understanding, which is uh, the four digits on the year dash. Uh, two digits on the month, that then two digits on the date. So the same will apply, that is use the percents. And then we start from, this one is starting from the date. Then we have the slash, then followed by the month, then slash, then followed by oh, the year, then we close. Now, if you can confirm on the data preview, it's telling you now this is what Altex will read from this. Because now you've told it available data is in this format, but convert it in the format that you or the format or the Altex format. Then also we convert it to the dead, the dead that I yeah. Then you can run also and then finalize on the last on the last uh, formula. Just the same. And get the read and then that is that that time pass we want to pass on the date column then our our function will be and the same follows the same applies that is here we are starting from the date then i think followed by the amount I think then followed by the year. Then you close it. You see now also it has also converted the format that is required. So that means already we have all our dates on the required format, all of them. So we can confirm on the the column that we had uh, told you to put them. So it is here. This is now the dates. This this is the same dates here. They've been converted to the form the, the format that Altrix is understanding. For both for all these, uh, they are showing the same. See this one. And also we have this last one here. Here. So we can also put these, these in one container and name it. Uh, filtering the dates. So you can name this filtering the dates. But in case anybody will be need, we need to look into it. I will know where we, what we did on a given container. So you can run this. Then the next thing, now we have our dates converted. Now we want to join now our dates or have our dates now back uh, together, all our data back together on all the filters. Remember we have this data here. This data was not yet, this is when it was not filtered, when we had not matched the data. But now we want to, to come back to this state where we have all the data together. We will use uh, another tool which will enable us to union or have all the data together and we will use the union tool, yeah. 
this one will enable us to, to now join or have all the data together in one data set. Yeah, so I will not leave this behind, this data here, which had nulls on the desk because we also needed the other data that is on those columns, specific columns that are available. So I will also include this in our union. But uh, because this one, this, this, this uh, false part of this, uh, this data is not having the, the formula that we had named the other, the other formulas, these ones. Remember, this one is having the formula, the, the column dead read. So we expect Altrix to tell us something about, about that. So if you can hear, you can come on this, you see, we have one warning. And this warning is telling us that the field, the trade, is not present in all inputs, meaning one of these doesn't have the trade, and it's this one, this first one, the one that we did, did not did, did not have dates. So we could not, could not be able to uh, put formula on the same. So now our data is here with that format. Yeah. All of them. So what we can do next, uh, we, can come, we can get them in an ascending order or we do, we format them in the string and in the, in the string type that was required by the business user, but let's first uh, sort them. So sorting, this tool will enable us to have those data in, this, in the order that you want. So you just come here, click the order, the name, uh, it will tell you which, which part you want to, to have in ascending order. So you want the date read to be in ascending order, or if you can, it's having the both ascending and descending, but you want it in ascending order as, as the requirements are asking, asking us to do. So after that, you just run your data, your workflow, just giving you now all the dates, all the dates in that, in that, in that uh, order, that's ascending order. So you can see it starting from 2006, 2016, all the way uh, until 17, 2018, 2019, 2020, up to the latest date. So here we have 2029 as the data, uh, the way the data were, were given. So I did not alter anything. So because we are 2029, we also expect something to be there on 2029. So we don't, I didn't, we don't change any that any anything here. We use the data the way it is. Then the next thing we want to do. Uh, we want to have the debt, the debts in the string format required by the business user. This kind of format here: uh, month with two digits, then stock, debt with two digits, then stock, then two digits in the year. So we come back to our matrix. Then we use another formula, another tool. I mean, we can even come to this to the pass, to the pass part, we select date time. Now this one, this date time is, it will be, will be converting, will be converting the date, even if you can click on the specific tools, it can tell you what will, it will do. So here, for instance, it's transform date, so time, data to and pro a variety of formats, including both expression, friendly and human readable, formats. So any format that you want will be converted by this date time tool. So now we want to convert our dates from the format. Remember the format that is on this dates are in date format, the way we had changed them. Remember we changed the, these dates into date format here. So we want to convert the dates into green format required by the business user or the as the requirements. So you come back to that time, that stock time format to string. So you can see here, uh, what is telling you, after it's got another three dead stock time format, that's this kind of format. But you can come here. We, now, when you come here, it will only read the dates that are having the, same, the format, 
that you get uh, the date format I mean because you want to convert from date to format uh, date format to string format so if this is this is now the column that you want to you to convert remember it's the date format then you can change this uh, that column name the way you want so I can say that that uh, formatted so that you can know this is now the formatted that so we want how did you we want that format to be you can just confirm starting from the month then that then here yeah, all of them are two two digits so you can see here we have that kind of format so there are so many of them here any kind of that format that you know they are all of all of them are here so we are starting from the month then stroke that then stroke here so it's this one so after selecting you can run your art no? so all now the dates we expect them to be formatted just confirm on that column yeah you can see it's two 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 kind of format that's the two digits on the month like here you see this is the month uh that's june you have the month first zero six and you apply in june then stroke the way it was asked then you go to date which is 10 then finally two digits on the year so it will select the year 2006 which is the short form of which is zero six so after that we can now confirm from our our requirements what else did we, why, why we asked to do so uh, you can now see uh, we, are, we are asked to have a two decimal place for the unit price and amount column so you can select the tool and come back to our favorite tools then select Uh, select two so that you can have those formats the the decimal uh, with the decimals i mean so they are we want them to have two decimals those that's the the unit the unit price together with the amounts column so that means the unit price here will convert it and to convert that into the specific uh, decimal you just use fixed decimal uh, type and now this 19 here this is just the largest the, the maximum digits that you can have in a, a numeric or a, any anything to do with the numerics or the amounts then six is the number of decimals so we want them to be two decimals so also on the amount we will also change them just to fix the format that we want so this this uh, this select tool it can do so much things but i'll just show you let me just finish up on that first now we have uh, let's just confirm if the decimals are appearing you see we have uh, on the amounts i'm expecting them to be two two decimals this one is amount in us dollars so also that one can be in two decimal places so just just also confirm this to two decimal places because also it's an amount and then you can run that And confirm now you see amount in US dollars is having two decimal places on every amount also this one on every transaction is having two decimal places and even all the unit prices are having two decimal places on each on each on each figure so uh up to there we can see now we have uh the the requirements are now have been matched to this point now we want to confirm uh, if we can replace, even though now nuts are not 
that doesn't have that much uh, issue because at the end of the day it will show on the final data that it's blank meaning there was no data but if now the, the user wanted us to see to convert them to have no details here on the part of the nurse uh, specifically on the date so this one uh, we'll just convert them just come back here so you can use the the formulas the formula tool here to do that that function take the formula tool you add it here and let's start from the date so anything you want to do mostly you can apply formula tool but now here you want to use an expression an expression that will enable us to convert or not convert but replace the nulls the nulls uh, with no details so what we'll do we'll use an if function so we'll use if is null if is null on that on that specific uh, column let's just start with the date if it's not on the date then then want to replace with no details or else uh, just remain with the date the way it is then we'll end our function so you see on the preview it's telling you when when on the date column is not if the, the date column is not then we replace with no details but if it's not now then we just remain with our date the way it is so if you run this you will have now you see here where there are nulls on the date it's now having no details the way we expected so there were the, all all of that will apply on the on all, all columns just using this this function here it will do anything you want in terms of replacing the strings the way you need them to be then uh i think up to there we've just done this uh this requirement the last one on this uh, workflow so let's put this in a container like that and say that uh, just uh, first of all what were you doing we were we were union uh, having the union or joining the data joining the data and also converting the dates into the string format required like that so up to there we can even output our data because now it's the doing what we needed it to be but now uh, for this data we want we wanted these columns these columns that category subcategory like that like that you can see it doesn't have so many types of dates like the way ahead they read date formatted and so on and so forth so uh i will have the specific the, the data you want that's the, the the formatted date so i'll use the select tool to select to me what i need so i'll join or i i will connect my data so for you to be able to or for us to be able to uh remove the the, the data that we don't want you remember we don't want this data because it's the previous data that we had so we can exclude it uh 
this date read you don't also need it you can also exclude it we only need this date formatted because it's the format that we need so i can change i rename it to to be date like that so i only have one column for that and again to to have this date uh, up here you just use this arrow these arrows to move our call or to arrange the columns the way we need them to be arranged in that final output so we can just uh, have our date up there so you see we have now our date as our first column if we read if we run this we expect our final our final uh, date to start from the date here you see so again remember this formula here we read it on the date the date that was previously available this kind this date it wasn't on this on this date format the one that we have right now this one. so for us to do to maybe change that into maybe change this we can use the the date format here the date format uh, the date formatted column so that you can convert on that specific column that we had selected that is date formatted again that formatted so we expect it to to run the way we asked it previously to, to do so let's confirm what's the issue you see uh, a non variable that's that formatted expression this means the previous side we don't have uh, this 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 uh, this past already so what we can do let's just uh, leave it the way it was i think let me just remove this one and also remove this one here yeah so it's for me to have the kind of format i want the date formatted this is what i want it to have uh the nails on it that's the first the first ones so date formatted is the one that will have the nails and this one So we have the nulls here, no details still. So what I can do, I can just uh, run the way they are. Just uh, use this formula here. So I'll, I'll remain it, I will take it the way it was previously. So that at the end of the day, what I need, and obviously I will achieve that again just come here to confirm notes on the date we just use the same formula tool here to express our our formula that is if if is null that's only on the date the dates that were not there we want to ask uh to have to, sh to show that there were no details on that that even though i told you it's a a minor a minor a minor issue because also nulls are, uh, are, are it doesn't mean that there's nothing it means the data was not provided but also the other the other data were were given so if if it's not on the date then uh we have no details like that else uh, the the data the data type that we still have then we will end 
a function. So here is supposed to be no details. So it is here. I don't know why it's giving me no detail. I expect it to have no detail. But it's giving me no detail. So I think let me try to use no details. But I guess still we have that requirement achieved. I don't know why it's giving me no detail here. So uh, that's what I was, I tried to see, to come up with. But now we want to see how we can analyze by getting our output. Yeah, see this one is telling us that that no details was truncated. So it was truncated to no detail, meaning no details. So this one is just, uh, having nice on that to be uh, details like that. So finally, we can output our final data. So we will select the kind of database, the kind of files that we need, and it's a Microsoft, Microsoft Excel. You can name it the way we want, like uh, final data output. Like, let me give it to, because I already have one there. Okay. Then specify a sheet, I can say uh, the final claim it data then okay so if i run it i expect to have now my final data the way i've uh, asked the, the altruist to output the final data to be so i also this one i put it in a container and say output so if i go to my files expect this one to be on my data. That is that uh, final output to this one. The one that I've just come up with. So if I read it, you see, we have the date, everything in the way the other were to be. So this one is my final data now. A final clean data with the required dates, formats, together with everything and that was required by the business user. Yeah, that's uh, how I managed to come up with this workflow. Yeah. So uh, we can even arrange it. Same is very long, so we can have them in also a container. Let me just arrange this so that I can have them in one container, which is uh, visible. 